Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a one day build that is a deep dive into precision measurement. Um, but in order to even start to move forward with this build, I wanna talk about measurement in general because through COVID I have come to a, a, a different and deeper appreciation and sensitivity to finer and finer measurements. Um, I have been using my machine tools, my mill and my lathe. I've been uh, purchasing and uh, manufacturing upgrades to both of them. And in the deep dive I've done into builds like the Samaritan uh, and my, uh, my little mini chop saw base, it's just like I said, I've become high, much more highly attuned to precise measurements. Uh, and it's actually sort of opened up a whole new portion of my brain is what it feels like. Um, oh, okay, let me start at the beginning. This tape measure is obviously where almost all of us begin measuring things on any kind of regular basis. This is a carpenter's uh, uh, tape. It's 30 feet long, measured in sixteenths of an inch. And, you know, there came a time when I was learning carpentry and uh, building stuff for a living in the early 90s where I did get to a point where I wasn't just measuring to a line, but I was measuring to a side of the line. And that felt really, really significant. But recognize that each of the lines on this tape measure is probably in and of itself, probably about 30 thousandths of an inch wide. It's, what is that? That's um, like eight sheets of paper, give or take. Um, and that when you're machining stuff on the mill and the lathe and mechanically making stuff that fits together, 30 thousandths is effectively a disaster. You want to be working in the sub, you know, like right around a thousandth or two. Uh, and then there is a whole level of machining uh, that goes to an order of magnitude more sensitive than that. I am not there yet. I am now, I feel like, at about the sensitivity of a thousandth of an inch. And in terms of some of the things that I make, in terms of some of the things that I make, um, and I wanted to, that's what today's One Day Build has to do with. And so I just kind of wanted to give you a tour on this. So where do you go from a tape measure in terms of precision measurement? Back in 1991, when I was working for Chico McMurtry at Amorphic Robot Works, um, I went down to Fox Hardware on uh, uh, 4th Street and Mission. Was it 3rd and Mission? I think it's 4th and Mission. Anyway, I went down to Fox Hardware there and I purchased myself a Chinese-made micrometer, a dial micrometer like this. This is a brown and sharp. This is my favorite micrometer right now. I have two of these. Uh, it's very reliable. I beat the hell out of it. It comes back for more. It's still quite accurate. Um, a dial caliper uh, measures in three different ways. Um, oh yeah, I've got my close-up camera here. A dial caliper measures in three different ways. It measures an uh, outside diameter, it measures an inside diameter, and it measures a depth. Um, but it does all of these generally. What you should understand is that this gets you in the ballpark, but that if you, if real true precision, like sub 1,000th or 1,000th or sub precision, this is not even actually the tool you want to use. Yes, it can get you there. And a great machinist, a great machine operator can totally use this in ways that would surprise, uh, surprise a craftsperson. But, um, you should recognize that these, okay, let me talk about why there's limitations to this. If I wanted to measure the wall thickness of this piece of aluminum that I've cut off from something, um, obviously what I wanna do is I wanna measure it like that. However, I've got a problem if I grab it in the jaws and try and measure its, uh, its wall thickness. Right now it says it's 0.124 uh, inches thick, which, it kind of makes sense. I don't think, oh, it might've been pre-bought pipe. Huh. At any rate, it says it's one, it says it's 0.125 or an eighth of an inch thick. But here's the issue. When you look at the inside where the jaw is, the jaw is square and it's not matching the radius of the pipe, which means there's a tiny little gap between the corners of the jaw and the radius of the inside of the pipe. There are specific micrometers meant for measuring the wall thickness of pipes and their internal jaw is 
a cylinder that allows it to touch the inside surface. Um, for depth, while this is definitely a <clears throat> a reasonable depth measuring tool for getting, again, within a few thou. Uh, if you really want to check the depth of blind holes that you're working for manufacturing, there are depth micrometers. Um, I also have an issue measuring the outside of a pipe like this, which is, again, pretty straightforward, right? I'm grabbing it on both sides. However, what you really should be clear about is that even if you like any tiny movement this way on the side of my micrometer is gonna give me a slightly different measurement. Uh, so again, these dial calipers will get you really, really, really close and your skill can take you the rest of the way. But for larger and larger outside measurements uh, or for more and more precise outside measurements, you need a more precise measuring tool and that's where this comes in. This is a, many of these things are called micrometers. This is re frequently called a micrometer. It's an outside micrometer and it is composed of uh, this yoke here, uh, these two hardened steel posts uh, and a barrel with some measuring increments on it. And it also has what's called a ratchet stop. So what happens is, is when you bring this thing to zero, so I'm gonna show you that I'm closing its jaws until it hits zero. And when it does, it starts to click. That is called a ratchet stop. And the clicking is, well, here's the question I have for you. If you are screwing down a screw to measure something, how do you make sure you're using the same amount of pressure every single time with your fingers? You can't. Uh, that's where the ratchet stop comes in. You use a gentle turn and once it starts to ratchet, you know that you have reached the same amount of torsion on the barrel every single time. Uh, this is a particularly lovely little uh, zero to one inch micrometer because it's got a digital readout. Most of them uh, have a combination between measure, uh, straight up measuring marks and also a vernier scale to get uh, below a thousandth of an inch in terms of the accuracy. Um, <clears throat> And this, like I said, this is specifically for measuring between zero and one inch uh, with an accuracy of one ten thousandth of an inch, zero, 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 one. This is a great tool. This is a wonderful tool. And so the way you would use this is you would uh, zero, 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 one. This is a great tool. This is a, the free spinning of this barrel is super important to the proper running of these. Um, so you bring this over to it and you would torsion it down. And it says, look at that, exactly half an inch in diameter. Uh, it looks like it's half an inch plus a couple of tenths. Yeah, four tenths um, of a thousand. But um, yeah. Okay, so that's how these work. That's, that's, that's how you would use these. And because the anvil here is wider than the jaws on the micrometer, on my dial calipers, it's giving a more accurate measurement because it prevents me from tilting or twisting the outside micrometer uh, and giving myself a false reading. These, uh, all of these calipers and micrometers can be uh, calibrated. Uh, on the micrometer, there's a dial uh, adjustment here, so I can turn the dial to change zero to make sure I'm always starting from zero. And uh, commensurately on these, there's a, a, a pin hole on the back that allows you using a special tool to adjust the zero measurement of these micrometers. <clears throat> Why am I going into all of this detail about micrometers and calipers? Because as I said at the beginning of this video, something has shifted in my brain. And uh, for certain kinds of builds and certain applications, I'm really starting to understand uh, both the need and the benefits of precision. And it's caused me to understand the necessity for a whole new slate of both tools and precise tools. So I've bought a couple of new lathe chucks that replace some 30 year old lathe chucks I've been using because they're way more precise. I bought a three jaw chuck recently that out of the box was one thousandth, 
actually just slightly less than one thousandth total run out. Uh, whereas my previous one, which is like, again, 20 or 30 years old, it's about 10 thousandths of run out, which means anytime I pull something out of it and put something back, I'm going to be off true round by like two or two and a half sheets of paper. Um, that's that, look, that's fine if you're doing a single set of operations on a piece that you've clamped, but if you need to do second operations, it becomes a, uh, it becomes problematic. Um, so I've established that my brain has been seeing things in finer increments. I am gathering some newer tools and better measuring equipment. And that is what today's One Day Build is about because I recently received a brand new piece of equipment that I am super psyched about. This right here is my newest measuring instrument. Uh, and it is a beauty. This is a vintage set of Mitutoyo calipers. Just like, um, just like this caliper, except in this box is the ability to measure everything from zero to 12 inches with an accuracy of plus or minus two ten thousandths of an inch. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <sighs> Look at that. Look at the beauty of that. Hold on. Check that out. Oh, yeah. Okay, so what you've got here is zero to one, one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, four to six, five to six, etc., all the way up to 11 to 12. And, <clears throat> I mean, just look at the beauty of these instruments. Now, I got this on eBay. Whoever shipped it to me was less than careful about shipping it. And it arrived with the plywood falling out and all of these literally tumbling around in this box. I was mortified. I thought that I'd received several hundred dollars worth of worthless pieces of metal. However, the other evening I spent about um, 90, no, about three hours all told, uh, sitting at my dining room table with a uh, 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 some mineral spirits and some light machine oil and some Q-tips and wire brushes and I adjusted and calibrated all 12 of these micrometers. Uh, and each one of them spins beautifully and smoothly. Uh, the action on them, even as old as they are, is magnificent. And they are all, they were all within one thou of calibration anyway. That <clears throat> speaks to what excellent tools they are. But what is the build? What is the build? Well, the build, is that this box needs some TLC. It needs <clears throat> it needs not only some TLC, but I see the need. Uh, this, it, it not only needs TLC, but I think it needs some more structure for these. These can still move back and forth like this. And I don't like the idea of, as this box is moving, of the barrel here being right. This is gonna bump into here. That's, that's no good. I, I don't want that. So first things first, I'm gonna clean up these tops, pull them out, clean them up. Then I'm gonna add a cradle for all nine of these handles. Two, four, six, eight, nine, yep. Uh, and then I'm gonna add another set of cradles for these handles. Uh, and then <clears throat> I've noticed in this box that I've got all of this empty space right here and also right here. <clears throat> so I'm gonna add a couple of expansion drawers to increase the utility of this beautiful case. Along the way, I'm gonna make sure that all the joints are solid, that all the hardware is up to snuff, uh, and uh, I believe I'll be using this tool for the rest of my natural life. So I'm going to build a case that can take care of it for the rest of my natural life. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm really excited about this. I. I literally just stared at this thing for a whole day. I find it so surpassingly lovely and I can't wait to give it a box commensurate with its awesomeness. So I think the very first thing that I want to do is I want to measure out and figure out this cradle that I'm going to make, uh, how big it's going to be, what the distance between each micrometer is, because I'm not sure it's perfectly consistent. Uh, what size hole I'm going to drill to get it all to work. And then I can pull all of these micrometers out of the box and start to work on the box itself. I'm also gonna add some uh, bracing up here that holds onto this. Uh, and I am going to be making one new tool today to support the use of the micrometers and it's called a micrometer stand, but we'll get to that after I've done, uh, after I've 
after I've done a few things. Okay, um, let's see, I need a piece of paper. I need a piece of paper. I'm gonna give it chamfered sides, maybe with a little corner there, but this distance is 11 one half inches. Um, the overall height of the thing, I think is gonna be three quarters of an inch. Okay, and then there's going to be nine, nine. Huh, not bad. Okay, so the diameter of each of these, I think three quarters of an inch is too tight. I think it's more like, no, three quarters of an inch is too tight. Uh, one inch I think is actually too big. So uh, I'm pretty sure I have a seven eighths. Yeah. And the distance between each of these things, and they'll have a, There'll be a center pivot and I'll go off of that one, I think. Uh, but the distance between these, is it really regular? Actually, it probably is really regular. You know what? I don't think these marks have been perfectly made. So I think I'm gonna actually have to, um, I think I'm gonna actually have to measure this. So let's see. Here's the way I kinda wanna do it. There we go. Okay. So here, oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna end up using this as my, as my cradle. Yeah. And then there's the question of what is the distance at the bottom of these? Yeah, I think that is actually. So I think, um, uh, see, how do I measure? How do I measure that? Uh, oh, yeah, that's about exactly right. So this is 0.33 inches. And so that's going to be this distance right here, 0.33 inches. And what we can do is we can measure 0.33 here. And we can do that special trick I love. Yeah, great. So uh, this, each one of these right here describes the bottom of one of my seven eighths cradles, which will hold on to the barrels of one of my micrometers. That's the barrel right there, it would fit right in that slot. I'm gonna need to, this whole thing needs a little bit of readjustment. So I'm gonna worry about those a little later. All right, so I'm gonna be drilling 11 holes here across this. And I want their, um, I want the relationship between the Forstner bit and the piece of plywood to be really consistent. So I'm gonna clamp in a second piece of plywood back here as I ran this piece here. And the nice thing about setting up this backstop on my drill press to create a solid relationship between the Forstner bit and this piece of plywood is that as I move this down, it is always going to be drilling the hole at the exact same distance from this back end because of this fence. Um, so now I need this back end because of this fence. Um, so, so now all I need to do is line up the center of the Forstner bit with, the, with that line I've drawn. Uh, and I've got a piece of wood underneath as the sacrificial lamb uh, to keep from hitting the force from bit into the table. Okay, I was just making sure my uh, drill press table was uh, tied down. That's an easy mistake to make. I make it all the time, actually. I saw a little bit of a slip in the force bit there. I'm just gonna give it a tighten. And we're gonna move it to the next one. Uh, occasionally when you drill through the bottom with a Forstner bit, you'll end up with a disc of wood at the bottom of the bit, which will prevent it from actually entering the next hole. So this is something you have to guard against. Also, don't uh, prevent it from actually 
entering the next hole. So this is something you have to guard against. Also, I don't I appear to have been a little lax in my drilling all the way. All right. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine beautiful holes. And what I will then do is cut this on the bandsaw to make my actual uh, my actual cradle. Now, what you might notice here is that I've cut to above each of my lines. That is because I'm going to achieve flatness on this using a sander. So in using this disc sander, I'm very careful about making sure that the table is square here to the platen that the sandpaper sticks to. That's really important because I'm often bringing things up, he up to this and squareness is what I'm expecting and thus squareness is what I adjust for. But recently I was actually using uh, <clears throat> a combination square here in this track and I was doing this operation and that is when I discovered that this line isn't square to the platen and in the like eight years I've owned this machine I have never realized that. Actually it's been 10, 10 and a half years since I bought this. So yesterday I uh, this thing sits on a big four inch, uh, three inch column. Um, the arrangement that the motor sits on sits on the top of this yoke that tightens down. I loosened it up and hammered it and got it um, perfectly square. But again, I spent all this time assuming that the relationship here was uh, parallel. And that assumption was based on nothing except an expectation that I had never checked. And when it was mission critical, it boned me. Um, that's been, you know, part of the journey of owning tools is realizing the ways in which they can and can't serve you and the ways in which your expectations about them can actually lead you into trouble. Uh, I definitely got into trouble. I had to remake a part because I boned it because these two things weren't parallel. So make no assumptions or you make an ass out of you and umption. Uh, all right. Uh, this is good. It is square all the way around. I'm... Um, Gonna figure out the chamfer cut and then I'm gonna line it in some felt and get it attached to the, yeah, well, I'm gonna start the attachment process. There we go. Okay, look at that. Lovely, lovely. So much more positive. Everyone's so much happier having a secure and safe place they can live. Yeah, I really don't think these were super square. Fascinating. Um, that is awesome. I really like that. So I think that's where this is gonna live. It's gonna live. So here's where the depth uh, measurement on a micrometer, on a caliper is, is really great. You measure the depth there, lock it and double check it, great. And then I'm gonna also measure it here. Damn, I'm right on the money. So that one's marked. Now it's time to deal with the amount of space we have in here. This is totally trashed. I wanna clean that up. I wanna replace, do I wanna replace the felt here? Maybe I don't even have to. But I definitely wanna add some felt here to this one uh, to put it in. And then this guy, right, this guy's got that business and that business and, okay. I'm gonna pull this out. This is some work I did over the weekend. Um, and these guys, I've just got to pull this all the way out. This is the support here for the three smallest micrometers. And um, they got to go. They got to go. They got to go. I'm also going to put some rubber feet on this. And that may be the very first thing I do simply because um, it'll make it easier to move around and it doesn't have rubber feet. And then, yeah. Nice, okay. Now, I uh, let's just start taking this thing apart. I'm gonna pull the lid off and pull the hardware off because this piece of hardware is so broken. Uh, 
Oh, flathead screws. Solid, slotted, sorry. I see now that I probably should have done the base of the hinges first. This box, this box lives in this box, but we'll cover this box later. Okay. Let's let's clean this up and commensurately clean this up and then we'll deal. hardware off and I put it into these this sorting container I have um, and I am now going to pour some uh, rust remover all over this I'm gonna clean this all up I'm not gonna make everything super pristine but I do want to get rid of some of that rust so I covered this uh, non-toxic uh, rust remover a few weeks ago I really like this stuff because it's reusable and non-toxic it doesn't dry out your skin uh, so I'm just gonna leave all these things soaking in this today and then hopefully by the end of the day I'll have uh, removed enough yeah uh, and the sorter is really nice because it's got three compartments so I can keep all the self same screws and stuff together um, I'll probably hit this all with a wire wheel or something like that once I'm finished. But we will see. Uh, I may repaint the side handles or I may remove all the paint from them entirely. I still haven't decided. Okay. So, uh, one thing that happened was I lost my mark for where this thing lives. Uh, however, it's actually pretty straightforward that it's gonna live. All right. Okay, I guess I, I gotta put some of these things back in here. Let's just test them out. I think technically I only need the front two and the back two. Because once they align, they align. Yeah, great. All right, so now I'm kind of inclined to not have these rest on the knurling, but actually to rest on the, on the, the barrel. I think that's, is that better or is that worse? I mean, don't actually I think the neural is better <sighs> again within like a very very narrow I mean it was pretty much right on uh, I think we're gonna glue this in and then I'm going to nail it again this is not a real structural join excellent I'm so excited about this build I really am I'm gonna go Now, over here on this one, I need the ability to hold on to these three calipers. Yeah, I need to hold on to these three calipers from the underside here. Okay, so I definitely want a cradle. I want three little cradles. That's what I need. I need three little cradles. Oh, wait a minute, I have them. <laughs> Look at that. I have the off cuts. These these are the offcuts of the other side of that cradle over there, and I can use these. I can, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I'm gonna make this a very shallow cradle.
needles go. So I need to climb. Right. Uh, so for this one, this cradle lives here. And then this is two, a two. And three. All right, let's uh, glue those in. Formerly, the structure for these was part of the box and built down to the bottom. I want that room, so I'm actually going to make uh, three little cradles for these as well. So, uh, the first thing is this. Okay, so the first cradle is this cradle. Oh, okay, I can do this one from the other side because I've got this. Uh, Oh, God, I can get rid of that entirely. That's great. Mm. Oh, yeah, you are out of there. I will replace you with something prettier. I'm I'm so psyched with how this box is going to look when we're all done. I'll just clamp this in like that, and then I can use it for tracing. Okay, now we're going to... Clamp this in above that and go for number two. And numero trois. Numero trois. Yes, name the reference. Spiro is the name of the waiter. Oh, whoops, I'm in my own way. Getting out of your own way. It's the title of my self-help book. Uh, okay, here we go. That looks great. So here are my three shapes. That's number one. Uh, so these will sit underneath the calipers, number one, number two, and number three. I'm gonna cut these all out on the band saw. I'm gonna make a little bit finer marks on these and then uh, yeah, trim them out. some felt. I'm doing cooking at home kind of thing today where I'm putting all the tools away as I use them. Uh, I don't always do that and frankly it's a problem because uh, I end up with stuff all over the place. As soon as this is done with the bottom, then I'm going to stain this and this and start to think about putting them back in there. Yeah, I'm using hot glue to attach the felt to these little runners here. And that's, um, it's fine. The porosity of the wood and the felt mean that the hot glue is a completely fine, uh, nearly permanent solution to getting the felt on here. I wouldn't use it for wide swaths of felt, but for this is... So. Yeah, I mean, you put hot glue on metal and it's just gonna slowly work itself away from it over time, but you put it on wood and those two, those two are gonna wanna remain friends forever. Um, for reals. It's not the neatest gluing job, but it's good enough because you're never gonna actually see it. It's gonna be all underneath. So there's one, here comes the second one.
hill. Yeah. Now it's time to do this attachment. And this will, again, use some crazy glue, but then also some tacks. So uh, let's get the bottom one in. Test fit here. Ah, oh, that's great. I love it. Can't really go anywhere. That's wonderful. I'm actually, so I guess in doing this by like using crazy glue, using CA glue and uh, tacks, I'm kind of using the crazy glue, the CA glue as a clamp, really. Uh, oh, let's double check that one. That's also great. Wonderful. And then this guy. Now, what I want to do is go in with the nailer and secure these. Nice. No blow throughs at all. And same thing here. Again, I'm going to clear my hands of the... Excellent. No blow throughs whatsoever. And now that is comfortingly secure. piece here which should allow me to hold these things nicely so that they'll sit one two and three yeah see that that's what I'm looking for that's what I wanted that's great I can now move these away and I can mark this and actually start staining this whole thing I really like the old chestnut. Ha, I love this old chestnut. Uh, specifically, chestnut. I like this wood stain. I like how warm it is. I think this is what I'm going to use. Oh, right. I got to mix this up. I'm very happy with all that. That looks great. I'm just being thorough. Now I have one little misalignment, which is in the box. In the box, this is uh, actually a little too close. So I need to open it up just a little bit. To create these little, I need to create three little notches here. I'm going to use a jigsaw here. I'm kind of going through some of the, yeah, I've got a metal blade on the jigsaw and that helps me because I'm going to go through some of the staples. Nice. All right. It is a moment of truth to do some preliminary assembly. Uh, so that I can figure out these drawers here. Uh, but first and foremost, this business, put this guy in. Again, even on the top of the stain, this um, the CA glue will be a really nice positive join. And we're going to add, we're going to try. Hey, that worked. Try another one. I think that also worked. Let's try one more. Get my hand away from there. There we go. It's not going anywhere. 
and that looks good. Terrific. So here's where these guys now live. And then this guy lives in the middle here. So now the question is how big is the drawer I get to make? We're gonna cover this face with tape so that I can mark it and then do some cutting and then so we'll do some final finishing on this thing. The height is here. We'll mark that here. On this front, as long as it's, yeah, as long as that's that high. It looks like I can come in a, a, a specific amount from each side, and so I shall. And I think, oh right, I wanna clear the dovetails, and I wanna clear the dovetails by a little bit. Sorry, finger joints, not dovetails. Um, what if we go to exactly one inch in? I think that's a totally reasonable thing to do. So, you know, I'm just like gathering, I'm, I'm lining up these measurements as I come to each one of them. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the overall shape of this guy. Um, and I'm just creeping up on it. I don't know all the answers, but each time I know what kind of answer I want, I'm going for it. All right, uh, so I, I needed two 12 inch drawer slides to make these drawers and I just rode over to our local hardware store that's five minutes away and they only have 14 and above, which is annoying. Uh, so my assistant's heading over to Center Hardware to pick me up some 12 inch drawer slides. In the meantime, what I've got to do is figure out the, yeah, the leftmost extent of this one, which is probably like there, uh, and start cutting out these drawers. So I'm gonna do that while we're getting some slides. This one can go all the way back because these are all in the line. This one can't quite because these are in the way, but, oh, look at that. Okay, cool. So, huh. got these two seven inch slides which actually will work really great here. So the question is how far back does this drawer go? And it's not that far. So yeah, I think that's it. One drawer, two drawers. Come all the way to the bottom? No, I don't want it to come all the way to the bottom. I want it to come like half an inch up. So now your question I'm sure is, how the heck are you gonna cut into there? And the answer is coming. Here is how I plan to do this. It's, uh, it's gonna be tricky and, it's gonna be tricky, but we're gonna do it. Let's see here. Yeah, it's just, this is just gonna be methodical and slow and I'm gonna do each one as it comes. Um, I switched out the tightening knob to the bottom so that I could um, not have stuff in my way up here as I'm trying to do the sign. So I have eight lines to cut. down. Now normally I do this on a jigsaw because I like doing the breakthrough cut on a jigsaw, but I want a really thin kerf on this. I want to remove as little material as possible because I'm going to use the wood that I'm cutting out as the drawer fronts for my drawers. That's why I'm taking such care on this cut. Normally I wouldn't care so much but the mod I want to make is to, I want to add a, I want to add these drawers, but I don't want to change the look of this box. I want to hold on to its, its beautiful aesthetic. There we go. This wood is so old and dry, I can actually cut 
using this this saw I'm using is a Japanese saw. It's a flush cut saw, and it's meant to cut. It is meant to uh, cut on the pull, but the wood is so old and soft, I can cut on the push. So in this phase, all I'm doing is just sort of scraping out the bottom of this very thin curved channel I've made with the saw, and I'm just waiting to kind of break through. I'm trying to avoid that so I don't chip my teeth on that. Hey, I'm through. Okay, last vertical cut is in. I might be able to do these two cuts at once. some work to do to clean all this up, but there's my two drawers. Okay, so now the next step is to build the drawers. Um, yeah, the next step is to build the drawers into here. Uh, I need to square up the sides of these square them all up and make them look pretty good. My, oh, oh, okay, so that's problematic. This piece of wood just split on me. The old versions of these boxes were made out of, um, sorry, the newer versions of these boxes are made out of plywood, but these old ones, I'm gonna hit that with some crazy glue. Uh, it'll eventually be glued to a drawer front, so I'm not that concerned about it. Um, yeah. about my tolerances, I'm, I'm back, yeah, but I don't need to be, that's totally great. Okay, so I've got some drawer slides here. Let's see. As now it's time to decide upon the, the size of these uh, drawers. Okay, so let's go down to about there. Yes. Oh, it's all gonna be the seven inches, I think. to build the drawers. I'm not building these with floating bottoms because I need them mounted on the bottom of the drawer slides. Uh, okay, so. Beauty, one drawer down.
Nice. Okay, one drawer is good. I love it. And the other drawer is getting its slides. Okay, uh, I think I can pull all of these and I'm actually almost ready for final assembly. I mean, it's gonna take about an hour and a half for final assembly, but we're almost there. Let's see, let's see how quickly we can get all this done. So you can uh, witness what I'm doing here. Here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, let's see. Um, right, first things foremost, I'm gonna put in these little stoppy stops, which will just stop the back of the, the, it'll stop the drawer front from going past the line. Well, it's the following morning, and I am very, very happy with how this is all going. It is time, I think, to start attaching the, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I have one more thing. Um, this is uh, the box of standards. Okay, when you, <laughs> I keep saying okay, I'm like Joe Pesci in Lethal Weapon 2. Okay, okay. When you have micrometers like this, um, you want to be able to calibrate them. And frequently, sets like this come with what is called standards, and that is a set of calibration rods. So picking one up at random, this is the five inch rod, and it's meant to calibrate the five inch, the five inch uh, caliper. And if I hold it in here and tighten in the calendar caliper, Yep, I'm about two tenths off of uh, zero there. And the standards, they travel with the calipers. This also is a box that says Mitutoyo. It's just gorgeous and it lives right there. Look at that, right, right? Okay, so uh, I don't think this box needs very much. I may add some furniture polish just to kind of gussy it up. But I think the next step for me is to start to put on the hardware, I'm gonna put on the hinges and get the lid going. I have to get some padding in the inside of the lid. I have to get some padding on the inside of the lid to come down and cover over these so they don't move around a lot. And I'll also have some padding on these and you can see the old marks for where the padding went. I'm gonna be replicating that with some 
wrap, felt wrapped plywood and foam. And then I have a big plan for something that goes right here that's really exciting and weird. <laughs> uh, and then I have um, another plan for the top of this case and then uh, reattaching the hardware. Yeah, it's a full day. It's another full day. It's a two day build. So one day build is two day build. Try that. Um, we'll try that, and then there's these guys, right? This, this is maybe almost the same. Okay, so now I want to wrap these guys in felt. Do I? Okay, wait. No, they're all the right height. And I know that they're all the right height because the box fits on top. What I can see is that these come within an eighth of an inch of the top and the box lid goes down. And that means with the felt, it should be absolutely perfect. So uh, all I need to really do is, well, I, huh. you know what? Yeah, I am going to try it that way. And if I have to cut that back a little bit, I will. We're just going to do a quick test. I'm going to do it using a little bit of this double stick. S sorry, the order of operations are that if I get the size of this wrong after I've wrapped it in felt, then I have to unwrap it and redo it. So I have to figure out its exact right persuasion now as opposed to later. There we go. Okay, that's where it goes. That's awesome. And I'm just gonna mark that so I don't lose it. And if this sits here like this, it doesn't seem, no. It doesn't seem to inhibit it. Okay, great, great, great! We've been making great progress. Uh, the lid is finished. I've got the um, I've got the padded pieces that are foam and wood that hold the micrometers in position. Uh, it grids beautifully on top of everything. It's now I think time for me to start to attach some hardware. <laughs> Excuse me, hardware. And that means it's also time to manufacture a couple of things. One is a pair of brass knobs for pulling on these drawers. And then there's one other thing, which I, I'm not gonna tell you about just yet because it's another part of this build. We still have a, a few miles to go before we sleep. Uh, yeah, there's still some, still some to go, but it's coming along great. I'm, <laughs> I'm having a great time with this build. Uh, so, um, what that means is it's time to look at our hardware. And that means pulling out the hardware we've been soaking in the rust remover. And I'm gonna put on some rubber gloves for this because yeah, these will be messy. Um, 
I'm excited. Uh, this rust remover is fantastic. All right, I poured out a bunch of the rust inhibitor. Um, so the first things I wanna attack are the hinges. Oh my God, look at these, these are brand new. That's incredible. So we get the hinges and we have the clasps and one of these is bent and needs a little bit of love, but oh my gosh, these are all gonna look brand spanking new. Oh yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, this uh, will include a link to this rust inhibitor. Uh, I linked to it in a tool tip a while back and I really like it. Oh my gosh, they all look brand new. This is fabulous. Just vigorous wiping with a cloth is removing all of this black. That's great. There's these little brass uh, washers that go over these. And um, one for each screw and I saved them all. I don't want to lose anything. And that's all the corners and edges. And these are all screwed in. I may actually toss some thin crazy glue in the holes each time I do one of these so that I have a little more gription on the, um, on the screws because many of them were actually like super loose. Here are all the little tiny flathead screws. And I think I have them all. We will see. Uh, so, hinges are up first. <laughs> the hardware's all back. The new hardware's in. Uh, I have drawer liners. Yes, I have drawer liners. Very nice. Felt drawer liners. But now, now what I need is um, the ability to open these drawers. I need drawer pulls. I, uh, I didn't have any. And I was going to make some uh, drawer pulls so that I could open these drawers. Yep. Oh, 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 I also have, I also have some little label holders. Yes. These little label holders, which I'll put at the top of each drawer. Yeah, that'll be really neat. Um, what's funny is after putting all the hardware back, I have like a few extra screws. Isn't that funny? I mean, uh, all the hardware has all the screws in it. I think they came from the fake feet that, or the feet that had worn out in there. Okay, so uh, next thing I'm gonna do is to machine some drawer pulls out of brass and put these guys in. And then we still have a couple more little doodads to, uh, to install. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make a couple of ring pulls. So I'm gonna turn a pair of ringish type pieces out of this. I'm gonna use my new 2J collet chuck, which I'm very excited about. 2J collets are great because they get very big uh, and they grab very securely. Yeah. There we go. Okay, now I want to uh, 
about the middle of that. Lovely! That is very happy. Nice. Turns out my index finger, seven eighths. Okay, second ring. This, by the way, is a lathe file. I learned about it on this old Tony, uh, specifically made for not overloading and being used for lathes. And I love it! Let's make the little brass holders that hold these on my new drawers. Uh, for this operation, I've got some K&S brass and I'm simply gonna bend it with a loop and then two holes on either side, but I'm gonna do loop first. And I'm gonna do it using these jewelers uh, pliers. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use this ring. So it goes like this, we'll do. Yep. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay, so then. Okay, they're not perfect, but they'll do just great. Now I want to, I want to trim and fix these and just kind of gussy them up a little bit. I'm gonna do that a little bit of belt sander and then I drill a couple holes. Right, these are cleaned up nicely and I'm gonna drill some holes for screws. I'm gonna center punch them. Excellent. I know this looks kind of hand-hewn, but to be honest, that's actually what I want. I want it to feel like a craftsperson has taken care of it because a craftsperson has taken care of it. The witness marks of the problem solving are part and parcel of the biography of this box. Okay. Uh, now, we can open these. <laughs> I'm so happy. Um, I have a couple things I need to do. Um, one, I need to open that. I'll need to get some grip chain for that. Um, so, when you use Let's see, let's say you are using a 12 inch mic and you want to use the 12 inch uh, standard. Actually, it's an 11 inch standard and you want to measure the 11 to 12 inch mic at the bottom. You see the problem I'm running into here? What, 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 what? This, is, this is one of the issues with micrometers like this is that it's like almost like a three handed operation. And there's the standard, and as I suspected, yeah, I'm one thou out, but I haven't calibrated these because I, I need a piece of equipment for this. 
I need a mic stand. No, not a microphone stand, a micrometer stand. Um, and I actually have some pieces to put one together. I have the base of an old lamp that I like. I have pieces of a Dremel vise. And the Dremel vise, okay, so the Dremel vise, this head of the Dremel vise, this part which ha handles the uh, the ball at the bottom of that vise, clamps onto this little uh, thing. I've remade this. I've remade this out of brass. There you go. And it actually fits in an interference fit. I made it about three thousandths over into there. So I'm going to jam that in there, and then I'm gonna turn this into my mic stand. <laughs> if I did this all correctly, that clamps to this and also to this. Okay, so loosen, yeah, it spins, that's great. Oh, it feels just as right. Oh, it's nice and positive. So now here's how this works. I open this up, I put my mic in there, and now, now I can run the standard. I can hold it on the standard and I can calibrate everything. That is my mic stand, my micrometer stand. I had no idea it would go that fast. <laughs> I thought there'd be a bit more fiddling but everything else has a home in this box. Where will this live? Okay, well, that's where this next step comes in. We're doing some final assembly. Standards live here. And the mics. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I just love, love stuff like this. It fills me with such relaxation. Delicious, <laughs> delicious feeling. So. You're wondering, as you lie, where the hell could a mic stand live inside this box? Oh, this is so great. Yeah, that's wonderful. There's a nice protected home for these guys. So where does the mic stand live? I had this idea. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's it. See, in my idea, the mic stand lives here. Right? See that? If I get this right, then I could just put two bolts here that come through. I could, I could put one bolt here and one bolt here and a single nut over here. Actually, let me get the other camera on it. Does it clear? And that clears. So I kind of want to just drill a hole there, a quarter inch hole. And I'll mark this one. See, I'm just going to have a countersunk up there. Uh, I'm going to do a little slicey slice here so that I don't pull up the felt. This wing nut, I'm gonna give it a washer just to give it some extra support here because I don't want it moving around too much. I'm so happy. Oh, yeah, that's great. That is really great. What's gonna live in these drawers, you wonder? Well, some of my other microbes. We are almost there. We're almost at the finish point. 
Um, you've probably been wondering what I plan to store in these drawers, and the answer is some of my other micrometers. I have a whole bunch, uh, and this is what happens when you have machine tools. You end up collecting a lot of everything, um, and I don't want them in separate locations, so... See, I've got a few extras. I've got two of these Centex Digitals, or kind of mechanical digitals, and then I've got this... One to two, that can live there. Oh, I've got a depth micrometer. I didn't even know that. Okay, that lives there. Um, we'll also keep the wrenches there because I like having everything in a single location. All the wrenches, all the wrenches! Uh, that needs work. That's the original one, zero to one inch that came with this, but it's still really rough. I still need to work on that. Okay, I'm actually going to keep that in there. Yeah, excellent. And these are all vernier gauges. I don't really think they're more like, yeah. I think I picked these up at garage sales and stuff before I even knew what the hell this stuff was for. Ah, and a two to three. I'll put that in there too. And now my micrometers all have a good specific color. One more thing. <laughs> I know, I'm Steve Jobs. Uh, I have one more thing, which is, the one more thing is that I want to label these guys. Uh, they are labeled down here as to which one they are, but the labels have long since worn away uh, from excessive use. When I, when I first got these, they were super dirty. I spent a lot of time cleaning them up. I said that at the beginning of this. I'd like to put a little, little label on all of these necks so that I could see which one goes where at a glance. And I, the only white marker I have are these. Uh, these, I've talked about these before. These are the uh, Kugel's correction pen. I love these things, but they're not thin. And so I reached out to Sarah Parkek. Uh, you would know Sarah as the space archaeologist. Uh, her Twitter handle is Indie from Space. Sarah is literally a space archaeologist. Uh, she uses technology and her own brilliance and crowdsourcing loveliness to find heretofore unfound um, archaeological digs. And for her bona fides, uh, you know how the whole Indiana Jones movie is about finding Tannis? Sarah found Tannis. Yeah, okay, so I reached out to Sarah and I was like, Sarah, what do archeologists label their stuff with? Because I know that it's like a nice fine paint pen and it's not a Sharpie. I don't think it's a Sharpie. I don't think it's alcohol based. What, what, what do they use? And she said, they use Stadler pens. Stadler pens, so I bought a set. Now these are rapidographs. Um, oh, we're gonna get into it, I'm gonna open these up. Um, but because I don't want to label these dark, I want it to be seen, right? Because I like my, I like my, I like my white out labels here that you can see from across the room. Um, so I bought some white ink for these Stadler pens and we're going to see if I can't make some labels in light colored ink. That will be the finish of this guy. All right. So um, what is a rapidograph? A rapidograph is a type of drafting pen. It's a type of drafting pen um, that's meant to uh, feed ink out towards where you need the ink. Um, old drafting pens used uh, capillary action uh, and some very finely sharpened points, like, an old, like a kind of a metal version of a quill pen to bring ink out so you could do fine drafting. Rapidographs do this by using, it's actually like, um, it's like this, okay? So uh, the tip of a rapidograph, here is the ink. This is the ink well, and it connects up to the body of the pen uh, and comes out a very fine, Point. Now, this is the tip of the pen. This is where the ink comes out. But in here is this little carrier with a tiny little hair coming out of it. And as you 
as you draw, that hair helps capillary the ink out of the tip, but also um, it helps keep that tick unclogged. Um, I know about rapidographs because uh, they are the pens used by animators to draw black lines on clear acetate uh, since time immemorial. And my father was an animator, and so I grew up with rapidographs. I grew up cleaning my, my dad's rapidographs for him. Uh, they come in many different thicknesses. I'm gonna try the thickest one and see if it works here. Um, that's an 025, that's an 07, 035. I bet that's an 05. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna try the 07, which has got a pretty, yeah, so you can see its face, its tip there. Ooh, you can see its tip there. And yeah, you can see, no, you probably can't in this camera, but there's a little tiny hole up there. Um, and the ink just goes in here. You just fill this with ink. Hear that sound? I'll actually, I think I can even, Pull this out and show it to you. Let me see here. One of these. Isn't one of these a wrench? On the bottom of the pen is a wrench with which to remove the tip. And when the tip comes out, you'll see. Oh, right. Sorry. I forgot. There's this little capper on the back. And there you can see there's that tiny hair I was talking about, that tiny little wire. And that wire helps both keep this clean and it helps capillary the ink out to the front. And so then you put this back, tighten it up with the back of the pen. So now we're going to fill this ink reservoir with white ink and see if I can't make some nice archeologist level marks on my micrometers. I'm really excited about this. I really, 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 really want this to work. Oh, look at that. They've got these like staging zones for your pens. This is awesome. Here's my white ink. Put the other two. All right, now that goes in here. And then that goes in the pen body. I should be able to draw right on the leather here. So that the shaking it back and forth is helping bring the ink to the tip. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, it's not quite flowing, but it's early days yet. All right, it is actually working. <sighs> Let me see if I can do a micrometer. This is a three to four, okay. <clears throat> I will label them by their high end mark. So this is four. Hey, that's totally working. I love it. Look at that. Okay, we're breaking out the whole set. We're gonna, we're actually gonna do a wall. Going back over some of these once they're dry to kind of get a little more visibility out of them and it's working great. This white ink is not as thin or free flowing as black ink, that's for sure. But it's pretty good. I'm gonna label both sides of each one of these. Oh no, I guess I could just label that side. Okay, this is a four to five. Um, 
I will clean that pen out um, because you don't want to leave a rapidograph with ink in it indefinitely. Uh, no, I can't really take this ink and put it in the rapidograph. I think it might, it could even easily mess it totally up. But here we go. I'm gonna give this my name. <laughs> oh. There she is. Savage micrometer set, zero to 12 inches. I don't feel like I quite deserve this set just yet. I gotta earn it. Hey, no time better than the present for doing such a thing. Um, yeah. <sighs> Thank you for joining me for this very precise. <laughs> That's it. Um, <clears throat> Thank you for joining me for this very precise one day build. I found it thrilling. I hope you found it as exciting as I did. Uh, and I will see you guys next time. Cheers. video. If you'd like to support us further, you can head over to the Tested Store. Links are in the comments below and you can buy things like our demerit badges. You've heard of merit badges. These are the opposite. This one here is for measuring once and cutting twice. We went back and forth whether to measure once and curse twice because that also happens. We went with the cut twice and this is one of my all-time favorites. This is when you accidentally release the mysterious blue smoke that makes all electronics work and then they no longer work. You can't release that smoke. Head over to our store, get yourself some demerit badges, and we will see you next time.